Hi there, and welcome to Worship TV On Location. And what a location. We're sitting by a lake here. It's a beautiful summer's day. And we're in a place called Hartley Mordet. And right over there is this gorgeous church. It's called St. Leonard's. And it was built in 1100 AD. How utterly amazing is that? This is such a peaceful area. And actually, this isn't my first attempt at bringing you a word. Because I was sitting here bringing you the word of God and all of a sudden, a massive, humongous um, piece of machinery came along, a combine harvester. It was right opposite and it was stopped. And not only was there a combine harvester, but it had a ginormous great trailer behind it. And clearly that combine harvester was on this windy, narrow road and needed to get past the car that was up there. So it was stopped and it was stopped right opposite us. And the noise was incredible. So we had to bring the, the message to an end and start again. But that's fine. That's fine. That's the way things go. We're right out in the country and there is a combine harvester that has stopped right in front of where we are. We've seen no traffic for ages and ages and all of a sudden a great combine harvester is right there. I wish I could show you. In actual fact, no, I can't. I can't do it. As you know, over the last, and it's incredible to say these words, 115 weeks, I have been bringing you a series called Overcoming Fear. And last week we finished with Overcoming Fear in part 115, where we looked at 1 John, the fourth chapter, verses 15 through 19. And we drew that series to a close because we felt it was important to do that. And I just pray now in the mighty name of Jesus that you have been healed of having any fear in your life, that you no longer have that fear because God's perfect love is pouring into your life. And because of that, that fear has banished and is no longer there. Well, on today's program, we bring you a brand new series. And I'm bringing you a series titled, The Father's Heart. And you could do it this way if you wanted. You could say the Father's Heart, and then in, in brackets, the Father Heart of God. Because this series, I believe, is going to bring a whole new dimension, a whole new relationship with your Heavenly Father. That's what I'm hoping and praying for. If you've got your Bible, turn with me to Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, so Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and we're going to go from verse 2. Paul says this, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. We've been looking at love for ages and ages with overcoming fear, so this is important. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body, and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. 
there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. Something that immediately comes to my mind as I look at this is verse 5 and 6 of Ephesians, the fourth chapter. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. That comes to me because I have heard on many occasions, in actual fact, I was in Israel some years ago, and we'd gone to the Jordan River, and we were with a group of Christians. We were on a tour. I was with another TV company at that time, and we were on a tour, and there were quite a few people who wanted to be baptized, and they wanted to be baptized in the Jordan River. And as we question these people about making a commitment to Christ and being baptized, we would often say, have you already been baptized? And quite a few of them would say yes. And we would say, then I'm sorry, but you cannot be baptized. We will not do it. And the reason we would not baptize people who had already been baptized, because Paul clearly says here, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. Now, I was baptized when I was 15 years old. And I can tell you, I haven't always followed God since then. I've gone off and done my own thing. I've been doing whatever I wanted. And my life didn't turn around and change with Christ in my life until I was 38 years old. So therefore, when I was 38 and things changed with my relationship with the living God, I could clearly have said, well, I need to get baptized again. But no, I can't. You see, when I was baptized, when I was 15 years old, God accepted that. When I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ when I was six years old, God accepted that. And that was a true, um, a true faith, even at that age. And that is why. One God, one Father of all, one faith, one baptism. So why the Father's heart? Why the Father heart of God? Well, simply this. There are many, many, many people who have never had a relationship with their Father. There are many, many people who don't even know their father. There are many, many people who have been abused by their own father, physically, sexually, mentally. And so therefore their picture of father has been tainted. Their picture of father is completely distorted. And therefore, when they try and look at the Father heart of God, when they try and think about the Father's heart, they can't. They're not interested because the word Father pours fear in their hearts. I want you to do something for me right now. As I'm talking to you, I want you to think about your own Father and your experience of your own father. Perhaps you didn't have a real father, as it were. Perhaps you were brought up by someone who you called father because that's who they were to you. They weren't your biological father, but they were your physical father. And your physical father had faults. I am a father. And I can honestly say, I have many faults. And if you were to question my children, I have four children, and if you were to question them about my faults, all four of them would say, oh my goodness, my dad has got faults. But there is one thing I am pretty sure all four of my children 
would say. Does your father love you? And I know all four would say yes, very much, because I have always loved my children. And as I've said, I've made faults. But what I want you to do now is think about your own father and I want you to think about your heavenly father. Think about the attributes to be a perfect father. Take all the things that your real dad did and did wrong and put it right. And you can begin to see a perfect father. And this is what we need to look at, I believe. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. How can we find the Father heart of God? Well, this is the journey that we're about to embark on. And I'm really looking forward to this. And one way to begin that process, one way to begin that journey, is if we take a look at verse 2 of Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Even verse 2. When I look at that, I think, how easy is that going to be for me? Well, I can tell you, after many, many years, I was just trying to work it out, actually, 40, 70, 32 years, after 32 years, I can honestly say I'm still trying to be humble. I'm still trying to be gentle. I'm still trying to be patient with each other. And you know what? If my kids are watching this, they'll be saying, absolutely, Dad. And you need to keep on going because you haven't got there quite yet. Always be humble, says Paul. Always, not now and again. Always be humble. Be full of humility and gentle and be patient. Those three things for me are so difficult. Patience especially. I would say quite often I can be humble. I can have a humble heart. Uh, quite often I can say I'm gentle because I'm not violent. But when it comes to patience, boy, oh boy, oh boy, you want to see me on the road if I'm stuck behind someone. Then you are going to know if I'm patient. And I find patience really hard. And that is why I need to pray constantly that God would help me to be patient. Because when I'm in search of the Father heart of God, I want to be humble. I want to be gentle. I want to be patient. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today, Lord. We love you and we adore you. And we want to follow you forever and ever. Lord, today we turn to you and we say we want to be humble. We want to be gentle. And we want patience. In Jesus' name, pour those things upon us now, Lord. Amen. And amen.